what's up everyone welcome to my complete dynamic search ads tutorial so if you're not familiar with dynamic search ads yet by the end of this video you will be an expert on dynamic search ads i'm going to start by going over exactly what dynamic search ads are and also giving you some examples of how to set them up for a specific business then i'll be going into my google ads tutorial for dynamic search ads and then i'll end that by going over my microsoft advertising slash bing ads dynamic search ads tutorial Keep in mind, you can also import your Google Ads Dynamic Search Ads campaign directly into your Microsoft Advertising account. So you don't even have to build your campaign directly through Microsoft Advertising. You could just import it directly from Google and then get access to both search engines at once. So let's get into the video. Now, if you're interested in these videos and other videos that I'm creating, I would recommend joining Surfside VIP. If you go to surfsideppc.com slash membership, you can get started there. It's only $2.99 a month, and I'll be bringing you all my marketing growth strategies for 2024 and beyond. Okay let's get into it for dynamic search ads today i'm going to be going over dynamic search ads so these are a type of targeting for your search campaign within your google ads and your microsoft slash bing ads account so if you already are running search campaigns you should consider running dynamic search ads because what they do is they automatically take your website content based on the targets that you set and i'll go over more of this throughout the video but they're going to use your actual website content either urls or categories that you have on your website and it's going to use those for your targeting so basically it makes it much easier for an advertiser to actually create different targets based on the actual content on their website so to give you a quick quick rundown of why you should test dynamic search ads first and foremost automated ads so Google will automatically pull in your ad title and your landing page based on what people are searching and based on what's on your actual website. So that makes your ads very, very relevant. Your main job is to create great ad assets, specifically at the ad group level, and then also write really great description lines as well. So I'm going to show you this in Google ads just after I'm done with reading this slide here. Um, Real-time optimization, the ads are automatically going to be dynamically generated in real time to match user search queries. Where this really is helpful is for if you have a ton of different products on your website or you have a lot of product categories or, you know, for the example I've used in the past of TripAdvisor has a ton of hotels on their website. Instead of targeting each individual hotel based on the keyword for that hotel, you can use specific page rules to target all the different hotels that you have in a specific area. The main thing that you need to do as an advertiser is not only set up those targets, but make sure that you're incorporating conversion tracking and using a smart bidding strategy. So what you may want to do is set up your dynamic search ads campaign and then allow Google to test it for several weeks by using either a maximized conversion or maximized conversion value bidding strategy. And then from there, what you're trying to do is find your best possible cost per action or your return on ad spend, what you're trying to target to run a profitable campaign. Now, the other benefit is an expanded reach. So instead of just using specific keyword targeting, even if you're using broad match keywords, you may not be able to target every single keyword that's relevant to your website. With dynamic search ads, you can actually use your specific pages on your website to actually make sure that you're serving the most relevant ads that are tailored to the search terms people are actually typing in and allows you to increase your overall testing, which testing is a huge portion of getting the best out of your Google ads campaigns. Landing page matching. So Google will automatically match ads to your relevant landing pages. So that makes it as relevant as, as possible. So when people are typing in very specific searches about specific, either, you know, the example I used before hotels or products, you're able to actually drive people to those landing pages. And you, all you really have to do is set up your dynamic ad targets. You could use a feed-based or URL-based targeting structure, so you could actually create a page feed. I'll go over that a little bit later in the video. Um, using your website content or your product pages to generate the most relevant ads. Last but not least, you can also incorporate negative targets. So if there are specific pages you don't want to advertise, you can incorporate your negative keyword list as well. So it's not like you're just leaving this wide open to Google where you're saying, Google, do anything you want with my website. You can also say, here are the pages that I want to incorporate within my advertising. Here are the pages I don't. So let's open up Google here. Uh, very quickly before I get into this, I just recently created two different tutorials about Google Ads dynamic search ads, a shorter version and a longer version of this tutorial. I'm also going to be putting some of these videos together into basically a large dynamic search ads tutorial. So anybody who's trying to learn about dynamic search ads, they're going to have this video, my Google Ads dynamic search ads tutorial. And I just recently created a Microsoft advertising search ad, dynamic search ads tutorial that will be published along with this video shortly. So if we come over here to our Google Ads account, 
what you could do is either create a brand new search campaign. So I go over this in my longer version of my video where you can create a new search campaign, basically create a standard ad group. When you're setting up your search campaign, your standard ad group is going to target keywords. So you can mix standard ad groups along with your dynamic ad groups as well. So it's, it's good if you're saying, okay, I want to set up these 20 different standard ad groups for some of the different product categories on my website where I still want to target keywords and I still want to make sure that I'm using that keyword targeting. And then I'm also going to be setting up dynamic ad groups so I can make sure that I'm targeting for people that are searching for specific products. So let's come over here and let's click on the plus sign to create a new ad group. If you want to drive more clients and more customers in 2024 and beyond, then you want to join Surfside VIP. It is the membership program for the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. You can join by going to surfsideppc.com slash membership. The moment you join, you get access to all of my content in the membership section. I currently have 27 videos published. If we come over here, I talk about all sorts of things from content marketing, search engine optimization, and it's only $2.99 a month. That means for the entire year, it's less than $36. I'm also going to be going over how to become a freelancer that can get freelance clients and how to build your own service business like I've done for Surfside PPC. So if you're interested in joining Surfside VIP, go to surfsideppc.com slash membership today and get started. It's only $2.99 a month and you get access to all of my premium content. And this is where you can choose to create a dynamic ad group. So I'm going to go over some different strategies for creating dynamic ad groups. And the example I'm going to be using today is let's just say KOA.com. So the camping company um, has a ton of different campgrounds all over the place says we want to start advertising some of our different campgrounds. So since they have a lot of different campgrounds all over, I just boiled this down to South Carolina. And what you can do here is you can actually use dynamic search ads to target based on some of these individual uh, campground areas that they have. So a couple different examples I have here is Mount Pleasant, Charleston, Charlotte, and then over here is the Myrtle Beach campgrounds as well. So if we come over to our dynamic search ads, and let's just use this Myrtle Beach example, because using this one example, you should be able to get the idea of how you would set this up for other dynamic ad groups is if we come over here, we want to set up our ad, ad groups. Now this is pulling in categories from my website, brickpop.com. So you can target some of these categories. And, you know, for example, here, the, the example I've used before in the past is up here with puzzles. If you preview, somebody searches Montessori puzzles, they send people to this landing page. The landing page has the 24 best Montessori puzzles for 2023. So that is one of the options that you have. Let's name this ad group Myrtle Beach. Okay, and now instead of using the categories here, we're going to use specific web pages. You can also use all web pages. So if you want to target all web pages, just basically trying to get as much volume as possible within your search campaign, you can do that as well. And Google will target every single page on your website. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new rule to target specific web pages. And we can either use exact URLs or create rules to target a web page. Now, if we open up the campground pages for Myrtle Beach in particular, what KOA basically has for every single area is this type of main overview page, which you would want to promote this overview page because, you know, somebody who's typing in Myrtle Beach campgrounds, you want this page to come up. But you also have a deals page, a map page, amenities, recreation, events, photos, food, local blog, and info. So there's a couple different options of what you can do here. We obviously want to target this page. So campgrounds, Myrtle Beach, site type lodging. This one, Myrtle Beach Hot Deals. This one, site type RV camping site. This one, Myrtle Beach site type tent camping sites. And then as we come over here, we have Myrtle Beach local area attractions. Myrtle Beach food. We have Myrtle Beach albums. So what we could do is if we want to target the main pages where that are actually promoting bookings, which is what you would want to promote, you don't want to promote the food that is at the Myrtle Beach KOA resort, people can find this by doing a Google search. You don't need to be spending your money on this keyword. You want to be spending money on people that are looking for RV camping sites, either in Myrtle Beach or South Carolina. So that's what you're trying to actually find. So what we could do here for this target is you could either say, okay, you know what I want to do? I want to create a rule to target a web page and say the URL contains this in it, campgrounds and Myrtle Beach. So we take this right here, or you could just use Myrtle Beach. Now the problem with doing this and doing add, so URL contains campgrounds and Myrtle Beach, is what it's also going to target are some of these other ones as well with the local area attractions, with the food. So where you may be better off doing is either using these as negative targets. So within your campaign, what you could do is set up a negative target for food, 
negative target for albums, negative target for attractions. They have a few others over here. So they have blog, they have general information. Um, so anytime you open up a URL, what you're trying to do is look at the actual structure of the URL. So there's two different ways that I would recommend targeting this. And the way that I would probably do it is just using some of these rules to target a web page. This would be the easiest way to me is URL contains Myrtle Beach. So then you would be able to do this for an area like Myrtle Beach, for an area like Mount Pleasant Charleston, for an area like Charlotte, set these all up into different ad groups. URL contains Myrtle Beach. So we click on save and continue. And now this is how easy it is to create your ads. So you want to create assets still, and I'll go over assets after we create the ad. The final URL dynamically generated, headline dynamically generated, display URL dynamically generated. All we need to do is write two description lines. So I'm just going to take some of the copy from the KOA website for Myrtle Beach, and we'll say, welcome to the best camping Myrtle Beach has to offer. And so we'll make keep this simple here. But obviously, you want to write really good description lines as well. Book your camping trip to Myrtle Beach and find the perfect campsite for your trip. I don't know if campsite is one word or two, but we'll make it two here. Click on done. We can create a second dynamic search ad. So there's no downside to creating multiple ads. But for right now, we're just going to click on save and continue. So now we have our dynamic ad group set up. And what you could do is you can create these dynamic ad groups for all of these different areas. Create, add the plus sign, like click on the plus sign here to create a new ad group, set up a dynamic ad group, continue. All we need to do here is say URL contains Mount Pleasant Charleston. So we come down to specific web pages, create new rule, URL contains Mount Pleasant Charleston. Okay, save and continue, create our ads, and it's really that simple. Now let's leave this page. And now what I would do to set this up, and obviously you want to create other ad groups. Um, so you want to make sure you're creating ad groups for all of these different areas that you have. They have a ton of different areas. So it would make it easy just to do this, copy and paste the specific area, separate all those into different ad groups. From there, what you can do is within your campaign and within your targeting is you can set negative dynamic ad targets. So we're in our campaign right here. If we come over to campaigns and we go to audiences, keywords and content, you're going to see dynamic ad targets. So these are our current dynamic ad targets. These are just some different ones I've created in the past that you can see. But what we would want to do is set a negative dynamic ad target. And all you would do is say, let's add this to the campaign level. And we're going to create rules to target web pages. And these are negative targets. So URL contains and take all those words out that we had before. So one is attractions. So URL contains attractions ad. Okay, so that's the first one. The next one we could do URL contains blog. So we don't want to target this blog page and add. So you can do this for all of these negative dynamic ad targets. So you would do it for albums, you would do it for food, you would do it for blog, for attractions. And then what you know that you're doing is you're targeting all these different Myrtle Beach pages that are actually valuable for your website. Now, I don't know if KOA has other Myrtle Beach pages on their website, but that's where you would want to keep adding some negative targets. The other option would be to take this URL or take the URL like this one, KOA Campgrounds Myrtle Beach, this one here, and just use a bunch of exact URL targeting when you're setting up your actual targets here. So when you come over to your campaigns, and let's come over to our ad groups here. So instead of using the dynamic ad target that we did for Myrtle Beach. I don't know why our our target isn't there, but that's fine. Click on the plus sign, use exact URLs, and then basically just go through copy here. I just think the other way would be easier if you're adding a bunch of different locations for targeting. But this is how dynamic search ads work. Then all you would really need to do at the end is, or at some point, is go into your campaign and underneath your assets here, make sure that you're creating assets either at the campaign level or the ad group level or both. So this is where you could use assets like site links to target some of these other, you know, Myrtle Beach local area attractions. Maybe just the attractions page would be worthwhile. Um, the rest of them, I would try to send people to these specific, you know, RV camping sites, lodging, tent stays, extended stays. And you can set those at the ad group level so that you're actually using site links to send people to the most valuable pages on your website. Use structured snippets to go over the different types of campsites you have, a promotion assets to go over a limited time promotion, pricing if prices start at a specific area, or if you have fixed prices, they probably vary. So this would be a harder one to use. 
location assets for where the actual campgrounds are located. You could use a lead form asset if you want people to fill out that lead form, but you'd probably rather just send them directly to your website. Call assets if that's one of the things you're trying to drive. Call out just to go over some additional information that people might need, and then business name and business logo to make your ads look more professional. So that's really that simple to create dynamic search ad groups. I never saved my dynamic ad targets, so I'm not actually targeting anything in this campaign. The last thing that you can do is if you come over here to your tools and you go to business data, you can actually upload a page feed. So you can see a page feed right here. When you click on it, it's gonna say select a source. So in this case, mine would be upload a file. And then you can download the page feed template directly from Google. If you search dynamic search ads and go to their help page, they have the page feed template. If you want to create it yourself, it's very simple. Column A, page URL, column B, custom label. And then you enter the URLs you want to target and enter your custom labels here. So I went over doing this with Myrtle Beach. And what we could do is say, okay, let's target this Myrtle Beach campgrounds page. This one, this one, this one, this one. And then we have two labels here. Then when you're setting up your targeting, all you have to do is target by these specific labels. So when you upload your page feed, these labels will actually come up within your targeting. Now, I don't use labels that often if I'm setting up dynamic search ads or page feeds. I just find it easier to use the specific URL targeting like I went over. But it's really that simple to add dynamic ad targets to your existing campaign. And just make sure that when you are creating your dynamic ad targets, that you come over here to your specific web pages. In our case, we said URL contains, and we just did Myrtle Beach here. So we could just take this Myrtle Beach, make sure you add, oh, create rules, URL contains, add that over here. So URL contains Myrtle Beach, save, and that is how you can create your dynamic ad target. I don't know why we're getting an unknown error, um, but maybe it doesn't. Okay, there we go. So URL contains Myrtle Beach is our dynamic ad target. Then you would set up your negative dynamic ad targets for some of those other pages that aren't as valuable. So these are dynamic search ads, what they are, why test them. It makes your life a lot easier because you don't have to create these really long responsive search ads. You can create multiple dynamic search ads in an ad group within seconds. Um, write your description lines, create your ad assets at the campaign or the ad group level. And from there, allow your ads to actually run, allow Google to do some testing, set up conversion tracking and a smart bidding strategy, and you are ready to run your dynamic search ads. Very, very similar process if you're doing the same exact thing. If we come over here to Microsoft Advertising, you can create a new ad group and create a dynamic ad group the same way you do in Google Ads. So ad group type would be dynamic, change the ad group type. You just need to make sure you enable dynamic ad targeting from your campaign settings. And then same thing down here, either target categories, target all web pages, or target specific web pages using exact URLs or using rules. Again, if you build one of these dynamic search campaigns in your Google Ads account, you can actually just import it directly into your Microsoft advertising account by going to import. That's generally how I set up all my campaigns. I'll build them out in Google, import them into Microsoft advertising, and now we can take advantage of both channels and all of that search volume. So. The next part of this video will be my step-by-step -step Google Ads dynamic search ads tutorial. So I'll be going over everything you need to know about creating dynamic ad groups, how to create search campaigns that have dynamic search ads within them, and really everything you need to know about targeting your ads using dynamic search ads. So let's get into it. Today I'm gonna to be going through dynamic search ads for Google Ads. So I'll be creating a dynamic search ads campaign, but where I wanna get started is I'm, I've opened up an existing search campaign. So I use this search campaign as an example for my previous Google Ads search campaign tutorial. I'll put that link in the video description in case you wanna watch that video. But you can see right here, I just added two ad groups to this campaign and they're both standard ad groups. So standard ad groups are when you are targeting keywords. So when you click to create a new ad group, the ad group type at the very top, when it says standard here, it's gonna ask you to enter keywords. And then when you save and continue, then you create your responsive search ads. The difference with dynamic search ads is when you come here to create a new ad group, you choose dynamic, it's gonna change that ad group type, we click on continue. And then what you're gonna see is it's gonna ask for your domain. So this is just pulling in information from my website, brickpop.com. And what we wanna do is we wanna scroll down, you can name your ad group at the top here, and there's different ways to actually target your dynamic search ads. So one of the first ways that's gonna come up is categories recommended for your website. Now, I did not create this. This is all done by Google. They basically just took my website and put it together into different categories, and right now they have 16 categories showing. This is a pretty new website, so I'm kind of impressed that there's 16 categories. And to show a quick example of how dynamic search ads work, they have a preview here where you can see example of how your ad could work, 
Google search that triggers your ad, Montessori Puzzles. So if somebody searches for Montessori Puzzles, they're going to send people to my landing page where I have the 24 best Montessori Puzzles for 2023. Now, this is all dynamically generated. So I'll show you the ad creation process in a little bit. But what it's going to do is going to pull from my landing page and say, this would be a good keyword for this landing page. This is the way your ad would look. And then all we really need to do is write the description line and Google handles the rest. So it does make it a lot easier to create your search campaigns by using dynamic search ads, but it is important to actually still create organized search campaigns, even if you are using dynamic search ads. The other thing to keep in mind is you can mix and match standard and dynamic search ad groups in the same exact search campaign. So if you're wondering, do I have to create these separately? You do not. And from what I found, and I'm pretty sure in Google's own documentation, if you are targeting keywords in a standard search campaign, that is going to take precedence over your dynamic ad targets. So I have found that when I'm running uh, dynamic ad groups and standard ad groups, I have found that the standard ad groups tend to take precedence if there is some crossover in terms of the overall keywords, which generally there's going to be. And don't worry about, am I competing with myself? You're not going to be competing with yourself. Google is going to pull out whatever the best targeting is from your campaign for that specific search term. So let's go over some of the different ways to target dynamic search ads. First and foremost, and when we're creating a new ad group, we click on continue and we're creating a dynamic search ad group. So I went over some of the different categories here and you can see if we scroll down, they have all of these categories that they've pulled from my website. So not too bad, but I generally don't use the category targeting. It can be used if you're looking for a few different broad categories that you want to target. So something like toys here, for example, you can say, okay, let me um, target this category of toys and you can see my preview. The problem is it's not always going to be perfect in terms of targeting, in terms of the ads that are showed, showing up, but it is still pretty relevant in terms of what people are actually typing in, the landing page where Google is sending traffic to, and the overall advertisement. So all of that tends to be pretty organized and targeted for the most part when people are using dynamic search ads and the actual things people are seeing in the search results. Now let's go over some of the different ways to actually target your dynamic search ads with specific web pages. One thing you can do is use exact URLs. So if you say, I want to send traffic to this specific page on my website, you could literally just copy and paste that website here. Then you want to click on add. It's going to enter it over here on the right hand side, save and continue. You could also do all web pages. So this is not bad to do all web pages in one of your ad groups, just because if you're saying, okay, I created this big, this, this massive campaign. I just want to make sure that anything that is relevant to my website, I am still targeting with my search ads. So it is a good idea to use this all web pages use one ad group that targets all web pages you can name the ad group all web pages here just like that and we target them it's going to choose that selected go to save and continue and now it's going to tell us to create a dynamic search ad dynamic search ads are very very easy to create the final url is dynamically generated the headline is dynamically generated the display url is dynamically generated all you have to do is write two description lines so it's really that simple to create dynamic search ads. So we're going to click on cancel for now and go back. Okay. And we'll pause our ad group for right now. And we're going to click to create a new ad group. Okay. So we'll do a dynamic ad group again. We are going to change this ad group type uh, to dynamic. So first, what you want to do is name your ad group. I don't know why we don't have our targeting here. Okay. There it popped in. Okay. Now the example I'm going to be using today is for the website O'ReillyAuto.com. So this is really one of the better websites that could be useful for dynamic search ads. Although the, the other thing you need to know is if you are running dynamic search ads campaigns, a lot of times they're just going to be very similar to the way performance max campaigns perform. And what you're going to see, even if you go to Google ads, own help pages about dynamic search ads, they have this message at the top of all of them, existing dynamic search ad campaigns may be eligible to upgrade to performance max. So if you're running performance max campaigns already, and a lot of e-commerce websites are running performance max and the search ads are targeted basically the same exact way dynamic search ads are targeted. Google is taking your landing pages and they are trying to find the best possible keywords. So when somebody types in one of your products, for example, let's come over here to O'Reilly Auto Parts. Somebody types in the Superstart Platinum AGM battery. Then what Google is going to do is say, okay, let's take this landing page. Let's put up a dynamic search ad inside the Performance Max campaign that's targeting this specific product, basically, where we're trying to send traffic to this product because somebody searched for the Superstart Platinum AGM battery. Now, that makes a lot more sense than trying to target keywords for every single possible 
product on your website. So where keyword targeting is much more useful is when we come back over here and we click on all the different categories and you go, okay, let's target exhaust, let's target air conditioning and heating, let's target alternators and starters. That is where you would really wanna target keywords and when you're actually focusing on specific products, that's where you would rather use some of these dynamic search ad targets. Because what Google Ads is able to do is read your actual landing page, read the headline of your landing page and say, okay, this is going to be a really targeted advertisement for somebody who is searching for this specific product. So that's one thing to keep in mind is if you are already running performance max campaigns, and let's just say, for example, you have your entire shopping catalog. So you have your whole entire shopping feed that you're targeting. So let's just say we use O'Reilly Auto Parts as our example. They have a huge performance max campaign, different asset groups for all these different categories, targeting every single product within their product feed, and then they create a completely separate dynamic search campaign. For the most part, that dynamic search campaign may not run that much because it's gonna be targeting those keywords within performance max campaigns. So hopefully that all makes sense. It could be a little bit confusing because there's different campaign types, but. The other area where dynamic search ads can be useful is for a website like a tripadvisor.com. So if you're targeting based on specific URLs, and let's just say you wanna target people who are searching for hotels in Nashville. So you can create a standard search ad group and target the keyword, you know, obviously I'm in the ad group name here, but just target the keyword and just say, we wanna target anybody searching for Nashville hotels, okay? So that's the keyword that we're gonna target in our standard ad group. Now in our dynamic ad group, what we wanna do is make sure when people are typing in specific hotels, we can drive them to some of these pages that we have. So the Holiday in Nashville, we have Drury Plaza Hotel Nashville, and we have the Holston House Nashville. I just clicked on the top three results in TripAdvisor, but instead of TripAdvisor saying, okay, we have to create a separate ad group for each of these individual hotels, what they can actually do is use the URL up here at the top to help with their targeting for their dynamic search ads. So let's come over here. We're gonna create a dynamic search ad group. And the example I'm gonna use right now is for TripAdvisor. So let's just say TripAdvisor, obviously this is just a, a just for this tutorial, so I'm not gonna add this into my BrickPop search campaign. So we do TripAdvisor, Nashville Hotels. And now what we wanna do is instead of targeting categories, we wanna target specific web pages and we create a new rule to target a specific web page you can use exact URL. So if you say, okay, we wanna focus on these 10 different hotels, then this makes it much easier to just copy and paste this ho hotel URL right there. And then what you have to do is click on the add button and that adds this as a target over here on the right hand side. Then we click on save and continue and create our ads. So what we can do is we're gonna get rid of this hotel for right now. Instead of using exact URLs, we can create rules to target web pages. And we can say the URL the page title, the page content, or the category. So you can choose from any of these options here. Um, I'll go over category a little bit later on in this video, or go over page feeds a little later on in this video as well. But if we use URL, and we say the URL contains, what you wanna do is look at the URLs you're actually targeting for, and this makes it much easier for websites that have clean URLs that are pretty consistent. This is one of the reasons why I chose O'Reilly Auto. Um, I'll use this example in a second, but let's come over here to the Holiday Inn Nashville. And if we come up to the very top, what we wanna look for is, okay, what do these URLs have in common? The word Nashville and the word hotel. Okay, so if you look up at the URLs, all of them have Nashville and they also have hotel in the URLs. So what we can do is we can say, okay, instead of targeting all of these keywords individually, if the URL contains, and we're even gonna use the same exact case that they have, contains hotel, and the URL contains Nashville, okay? So we're gonna choose these two and click on add. And now it's going to say our dynamic ad target is going to be the URL contains hotel, the URL contains Nashville. That will target this hotel here, that will target this hotel here, that will target this hotel here, it will target this hotels page most likely, although this one says hotels, so we could actually target that separately. But what we can do is anytime there is an individual hotel, let's just scroll to the bottom of the list, we'll find a random hotel here. Okay, we'll just take this Homewood Suites by Hilton Nashville Downtown. Hotel very first here, and then we have Ho Nashville Downtown, Nashville Davidson County, Tennessee. So you can also say, and we wanna make sure it says Davidson County. 
That could be another option you have, or we want to make sure it says Tennessee. So you can use all of these different pieces of the URL to make sure that your ads are as targeted as possible. We can get rid of this and say URL contains hotel and Nashville and, and we'll take this other piece here, click on add Davidson County, Tennessee, Nashville hotel, all of these different URLs contain that. So now we know for sure that when we are using this dynamic ad target, it's going to use all of the different Nashville hotels that we have listed on TripAdvisor. So what we could do is click on save and continue. It's really that simple to set our dynamic ad targets. Scroll to the bottom, write our two description lines. So I'm just going to write these pretty quickly. We'll, we'll just do. Okay, so we have our two description lines here. Discover the best hotels in Nashville at the best possible prices. Book your dream stay. Book a top rated Nashville hotel today and save. Trip advi TripAdvisor has the best prices. So we click on done. We can create another dynamic search ad if we want, but we're going to click on save and continue. And now we have our dynamic ad group launched and we are targeting all of our Nashville hotels. So you can see how much easier that would be for a website like TripAdvisor than trying to target each page individually. So the dynamic ad makes this very worthwhile to test dynamic search ads out, especially for very large websites. Now, you're not going to use them as much for an O'Reilly Auto Parts because if you're using Performance Max campaigns already, then you already have these dynamic search ads, but it is a good example. So I'm still going to use O'Reilly Auto Parts for when I'm creating this campaign. One thing I want to show you real quick is you can actually use a page feed to target your dynamic search ads. Personally, I think it's much easier to not use a page feed, so I'm not going to go over this extensively in this video. But if you do want to use a page feed, you can come to this page here. I'll put it in the video description. You can download the page feed data template, which looks like this. And what it has is page URL and custom label. So I already put a couple little examples here for O'Reilly Auto. And what you'll see is in the left-hand column, in this A, A column here, you have page URL, and underneath you would put these two URLs there, and then you would set a custom label under that as well. So we could do our batteries custom label. Let's make sure we put our... Uh, and what you're going to see is, for their example, you have, okay, example.com slash one goes into a custom label of category page and shoes. This one goes to single product and top seller. This one goes USA, Nevada, Las Vegas, five stars. So what you're able to do is basically create a page feed of all of the different pages on your website and then put a custom label for all of these different pages as well. So for O'Reilly Auto, what I could do is say, okay, let me take maybe the 20 batteries that I really want to focus on and put those in my page feed and maybe put top selling batteries. So then when you are setting your actual targets, you can say, okay, I'm going to use the custom label to target the top rated batteries. Now, once you are done with your page feed, what you need to do is go back into your Google ads account. And from there, you're going to go into tools and you're going to go into your business data. From your business data, you can upload your data feeds here. So if you click on the plus sign, you can see page feed right here. So when you click on the page feed, you can see select a source, upload a file, and then you could select that file from your computer. And then all you need to do is use those actual labels for your targeting. I personally prefer to use the URL rules. I think they're so much easier to manage that way. So this is really a matter of preference. If you want to put together a huge page feed, you can absolutely do that. It can be good for websites that don't change a lot, that don't have a ton of new products added or a ton of products that are removed. Because what I like about using the URLs is let's just say, for example, one of these hotels is no longer, you know, changes names or TripAdvisor gets rid of the page altogether. Basically, it's just going to automatically remove that page from our targeting because that page no longer exists on our website. So you don't really have to worry too much about making sure that your page feed is completely up to date. As long as, you know, if you are using these URL the way, the way that I showed you earlier, where you're targeting based on the URLs. So let's come back over here and let's click on create to create a new campaign. We could do this from the campaign screen as well, but we'll do create a new campaign here. Very first thing you want to make sure you're using conversion tracking. So if we're going to use O'Reilly Auto Parts as the example, obviously what they want to track is going to be anybody who's purchasing something from their website. They may want to track people who are finding a repair shop. They may want to track people who create a new account. You may want to track all of those different things as a conversion. So any key performance indicator on your website, for the most part, you're going to be optimizing for actual sales on your website, whether it's somebody doing a free pickup or somebody ordering delivery, people adding things to their cart, people beginning the checkout process, track all of those different key things that are happening on your website. So then you can optimize for them. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to choose our campaign objective 
and let's just pretend we have all of our different conversion tracking set up already, which I don't. Um, I do for BrickPop, but I don't for O'Reilly Auto Parts, obviously. And then we want to use your conversion goals to improve sales. I don't really have any sales conversion goals, but you would want to select the conversion goals that you want to optimize for for this campaign. And then we want to click on continue. And now what we're going to do is build a search campaign using website visits. We can enter our website here. So let's just enter our O'Reilly.com. Okay, we'll paste that right here. And then our campaign name will say O'Reilly Auto Parts Dynamic Search Ads. Okay, and we'll click on continue. Okay, what do we want to focus on? Conversions. So this is where you set your bidding strategy. So I would personally probably focus on conversion value, set a target return on ad spend, or you could just start with maximize conversion value and we'll click on next here. We're going to use the search network. We can include Google search partners. We won't include the Google display network. Next is going to be our location targeting. So we'll say United States. Um, we'll skip through some of these steps here. You can add audience segments to your campaign if you want to observe specific audience segments, maybe people who are in the market for auto parts. So if we search here, now the two options for our targeting or observation, you want to use observation because targeting is going to limit your campaign only to people within specific audiences. So let's say auto parts. And you can see people who are in the market for car brakes, oil changes, auto parts and accessories, high performance and aftermarket auto parts. So you can choose some of these audience segments. I'm just going to skip this step for now. We're going to click on next. And now what we want to do is set our ad group. Now, one of the frustrating things is when you are in the campaign creation process, it automatically sets to a standard ad group. So what you can do is create your first standard ad group if you want any types of keywords that you want to target and set that for your specific first ad group. I really, I just want to fast forward to this part a little bit. So instead of creating our standard ad group here, what we're going to do is we'll keep it ad group one. We have our keyword suggestions here. We're going to scroll to the bottom. We have our ad already. This is not an ad I would run. And we're just going to click on done for right now and click on next. Okay. Set our average daily budget for this campaign. We'll do $25 and click on next. Our campaign is ready to publish. Okay. So let's scroll to the bottom. It says value is required. We have a value there. Okay, let's publish our campaign. Now, this is how, if I am creating a dynamic search ads campaign, this is generally how I do it. So now we come over to our campaigns for O'Reilly Auto Parts. And what we're going to do is come to our campaigns here. We have our O'Reilly Auto Parts dynamic search ads campaign. Let's come to the campaign. Let's pause our initial ad group. So other, they're really asking these things now. Okay, let's click on the plus sign here. And let's set up our ad group. And now this is when you want to start creating your dynamic ad groups. Yes, we want to change our ad group type. And let's say, okay, we want to target people looking for batteries. So again, I would just basically look at, okay, we have our category of batteries here. And then we open up a battery and you're trying to look for things that are common with any of your product pages and any of these pages as well. So what you could do is, I don't know if there's anything that's going to be specific to product pages versus the actual uh, category page itself. But what we could do is we could just say, okay, it looks like this is in every single product page and product category page for O'Reilly Auto Parts. The other thing if, is if we go to other categories here, so I have detailing open, I have breaks open. So you'll see we have shop B breaks and maybe we scroll down and we open up brake pads and shoes and that's probably going to bring up some different products that are for sale. Okay, now what we can do is open up one of these product pages as well. So we'll just create two different dynamic ad groups for this example. So what it looks like is if we do shop B battery, that is going to, because detail looks like their product pages. Okay, so that makes sense. Shop B detailing. Okay, I don't even know how to say that word. Um, let's open up tire and wheel. Shop B detailing tire and wheel. We'll do wheel cleaner. Just trying to look at some of the URL structures here and go over how the URL can impact the way that you target. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so here's what we are going to do. Basically, what we can start is dynamic search ads and we can start with a category page like this. Now, this may not be the best to target because there's no products on this page. Uh, so maybe we don't even want to target this page. Uh, let's look at Okay, so this would be a better thing to target. So we could do shop B breaks brake pads. So we'll copy this right here, this URL, and then our ad group is going to be brake pads category 
page. This will all make sense as we go. They have 252 categories here, so more categories than my website. You could literally just use some of these categories here as well to create your ad groups, and you get plenty of search volume here, as you can see. It'll rank it based on search volume if you select it. Oil, tools, engine, maybe a little bit too broad, but things like, you know, as we come down here, brake pads, that's exactly what we're doing. So we could pretty much just choose this category here, and then people that are searching for brake pads, brake pads, uh, they will send them to that landing page, and then we have brake pads and shoes, O'Reilly Auto Parts, and it's going to use our description. Everything else is dynamically generated. So instead of using the category, let's use our specific web pages and let's create URLs to target a web page. What you could do is if you want to target product category pages like this one, you could use, or this one here, you could use the exact URL, but let's just say, you know, we could use this here, shop B breaks, breaks pad, brake pads, and URL contains that ad. We click on save and continue. And now we have our first ad group created. Very simple. I'm going to just do, you know, some description line here and we are going to do some description line here obviously you want to create better advertisements than this and actually describe the exact thing people are going to be shopping for on your product category page or in the way we did with TripAdvisor, you know just highlight get the best hotel deal in nashville uh and you know shop today type thing okay save and continue and now we have our first ad group created it's a dynamic ad group and it's the brake pads category page. Now what we want to do is target brake pads products. So we want to target some of these individual products here. So what you're looking for is, okay, what is different about these uh, product pages compared to the product category pages? So we can look as we look at a couple different brake pad pages and let's just see what they have in common. So we have our brakes page. We have our category page. These have a C here. Brake best select brake pads. C brake best select brake pads. Let's make sure. So that would target every single brake best select brake pads that they have here, which looks like pretty much all of them, at least the very top. Um, and this is sorted by relevance. Let's go. So that might target by every single different brand. Um, and that's one thing you want to look at. So you're not, you don't have too much crossover here. So this one, okay. is going to be, so you can actually, instead of targeting every single brake pad product, you could actually use this and say, okay, let's use C AC Delco brakes, brake pads, copy this. And now we can use a dynamic ad group, AC Delco brake pads. Now I am not a car person whatsoever. So as if you couldn't tell throughout the video, but we could use create rules to target this web page. URL contains this AC Delco breaks, breaks pads. Click on add. Now we have our dynamics ad target, save and continue. And we'll do the same thing here. Description line here and description line here. And we click on done, save and continue again. And now we have our second ad group created. So basically what you can do is just continuously go through all these different product category pages. And now we could say, okay, let's target every single different uh, battery product page here. And we'll look, we're will look. we looking for things that these, product, these battery pages have in common. And it looks like one of the things is battery accessories batteries. So just basically this part right here is every single product page has that. So we can come over, we can create, let's pause these ad groups so they don't run. I don't want to send any traffic to uh, the O'Reilly Auto Parts store. So let's create our new ad group. This will be the last one we create for right now. And we're going to click on continue. And now we have ad group four. So under ad group four, we will do our batteries, all products. And we scroll down specific web pages, create rules, URL contains. Okay. So the URL contains this part here, where if we go to a couple of these different batteries that we opened, so this will also target the product category page, it looks like, but it will also target every single product page. So if somebody's searching for this specific product, what Google is going to do is they're going to take the headline and try to fit in this entire headline. So it's as targeted as an advertisement as possible, much more targeted than we can do, you know, trying to actually target every single individual product. So that's where dynamic search ads can be very useful. Same thing with Nashville hotels. Instead of targeting each individual hotel in Nashville, if you're a trip advisor, you cannot target the thousands and thousands and thousands of hotels you have lifted, listed in every single destination everywhere. So dynamic search ads is where that makes your life a little bit easier. 
So we click on save and continue, and I think you get the drift at this point. Uh, description line one and description line two. I think we did three different description lines every single time, but these are not good advertisements. You definitely want to write much better descriptions, and you can create multiple ads in each ad group. The other thing is, if you want to create standard ad groups to go along with your dynamic search ad groups, that's perfectly fine. So you want to just continue building out your campaign. If you're O'Reilly Auto Parts, this campaign is still going to take a while to build because you have all these different categories here. If you go to all categories, what I would basically recommend getting started with is, okay, how can we target every single category? And the easy way to do this would to be taking this brakes, brake pad, shoes portion of the URL, which would target this entire product category page. It would target a lot of these different, it looks like it would target every single product on their website that is a brake pad, a shoe. And then all you want to do is use your description line one, description line two, and say, you know, shop brakes and brake pads at O'Reilly Auto Parts. You can do the same thing for batteries, accessories, and just basically take this portion right here and target that portion of the URL, and that will target all of these different product pages in addition to the product category page. So we went over how to do this with Nashville. You could easily target every single hotel on your website in Nashville by using dynamic search ads. So they can be very easy to create. And then all you want to do is just wait till some of your activity is coming in. The one thing I would recommend is within your campaign and going to your campaign settings, I generally recommend getting started with a portfolio bid strategy. So portfolio bid strategies, instead of just using maximize conversion value, we can set a target return on ad spend and say, okay, we want to have a 300% return on ad spend to start. If we do change bid strategy here, what we could also do, come over here to tools, go to budgets and bidding and go to bid strategies. And when you go to bid strategies, you can create a portfolio bid strategy, click on the plus sign, target return on ad spend, name your strategy, select the campaign. So obviously we would select our dynamic search ads campaign, set your target return on ad spend. Let's just say it's 300%. For example, you can create a shared budget. So if you have multiple search campaigns you're running, and then what you could do is a maximum bid limit. So when you first get started with your maximized conversions or maximized conversion bid strategy, I always find that Google just basically wastes the first several days of budget testing, which is perfectly fine, but sometimes they bid way too high. So you can look at the Google Keyword Planner. If we come over here to tools, you go to your planning here and go to Keyword Planner and see how much people are bidding for a lot of these different keywords. Now, front brake pads that cost $1,000 each, probably pretty high bids. So what you could always do is, let's just say, let me set my maximum bid limit at $5, and we will see how our campaign spends in the beginning. And then if it's not spending, we can increase this bid limit. If it's spending and hitting our daily budget, we can decrease this bid limit and try to find that ideal target where we are maximizing our return on ad spend, and we're also spending our full daily budget. So let's pause this campaign so I don't have an O'Reilly Auto Parts campaign running. So we're going to pause this here. Some ads limited by policy, probably because I have trademarks in my ad tech. So that's because I'm using TripAdvisor and I don't have the TripAdvisor trademark. So if you have any questions about dynamic search ads, this is a, a good overview of how to get started with them, ways you can add them to your existing search campaigns, ways you can create a new dynamic search ads campaigns, and exactly how they're targeted. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is what I went over with Performance Max and you could also use these page feeds. That's the one thing I didn't go over because I just find it much easier to target by URL. But the other thing is your dynamic search ads campaigns. Now this is currently in beta to upgrade dynamic search ads to performance max, but you may start getting, if you're running strictly a dynamic search ads campaign with no standard ad groups, Google may tell you, why don't you upgrade this to a performance max campaign? Because then what you can do is Google will actually use their entire inventory to say, okay, maybe we can target people when they're on this channel with, a specific advertisement because based on every single signal we have, this person is going to be interested in purchasing a new car battery or a new brake pad or whatever based on their search history, pages that they're visiting. So you may want to upgrade to a performance max campaign, but overall, this is how dynamic search ads work. In the final part of this video, I'll be going over how to create dynamic search ads campaigns within your Microsoft advertising account. So these are also called Bing ads, dynamic search ads. So if you're already running Google ads, you should also be testing Microsoft advertising because it also performs very well. And it's worth testing to see if you can improve your cost per lead or improve your return on ad spend. So let's get into Microsoft advertising dynamic search ads. Today, I'm going to be going over Microsoft Advertising, aka Bing Ads, dynamic search ads campaigns. So the very first thing I want to go over is if you have an existing search campaign, and this, this account exists for the sole purpose of tutorials, so don't mind all these different campaigns I have in here. But what we could do is if you have an existing 
search campaign, you can create dynamic ad groups within your search campaign. So you'll see here right now it's showing no ad groups. Let's get rid of our filter here. Uh, so we have a couple different ad groups here. These are both just standard ad groups that are targeting keywords. So what we can do is we can create a brand new ad group. And when we create a new ad group in Microsoft Advertising, the very first thing you're going to see up here is whether or not the ad group is a standard or a dynamic ad group type. So let's click on the drop down. We can change this to a dynamic ad group, change the ad group type. And now what we can do is run dynamic ads within our search campaigns. Now there's something you need to do within your settings just to make sure you can enable dynamic search ads within your search campaign, but we'll do that afterwards. So we'll enter our website here. So I'm just going to be using my website, brickpop.com, um, and we'll grab a page from brickpop.com. Let's just come over here to the shop page, and we'll find a page that we can use for our dynamic search ads. So let's come over to our Microsoft advertising account here. Website language is going to be English for my website. And then targeting source, you could either use Bing's index of your website, URLs from your page feed only. I will go over page feeds in a minute. Use URLs both from Bing's index of my website and my page feed. So three different options there. And then as we come down here, we can create dynamic ad targets. So I'm just going to use Bing's index of my website because I don't have a page feed. So it doesn't make sense to choose these other two. Um, we are going to enable dynamic search ad text. So I'll go through that in a little bit. So let's name our ad group and let's come over here and choose one of the pages on my shop. So we'll choose a product category page. And what we could do with our dynamic search ads is we can actually say, okay, what we want to target for this specific mon or this specific dynamic search ad is going to be Montessori play gyms. So we're going to take this URL and we're just going to copy the link. So we're going to come back over to our Microsoft advertising account. Let's name our ad group. So it's Montessori play gyms. Um, let's make sure we have the right. Okay. Yeah. Montessori play gyms there. Uh, we're not going to use ad group setting from another ad group. And then you could see target categories of web pages. So they don't actually have my website here. This is a pretty new website. So I don't even know if there's how indexed it is in Bing ads. Um, we could target all web pages or we could target specific web pages. And that's really what you want to do. You can create an ad group that targets all web pages and just basically make sure that every single web page on your website is being targeted. It's not something I do generally. It really depends on, you know, what my overall goals are. So target exact URLs in my site, or you can create rules. So we're in this case, if we do exact URLs, what we could do is just copy and paste this URL. We can add all, so you can add multiple different pages to your website. So maybe I want to create uh, some for this specific category, Montessori play gyms. And maybe what I can do is pull out some of the different products as well. Now, this is where what you can do is we'll open this page really quickly. What you can do is create rules as well instead of using exact URLs. So I'll go over rules in a second, but basically all you need to do is enter any of the URLs that you actually want to target here. And then you're going to see, it's going to say, leave the bid empty to use the default ad group bid. You should be using smart bidding anyway, even if you're just using maximize conversions or maximize conversion value and obviously using your conversion tracking as well. So that is a separate video and a separate, uh, you know, a separate tutorial. And I did recently create a Bing ads tutorial. So I'll link that in the video description in case you are interested in watching that one. But if we scroll down here, well, all we need to do is create an ad. So creating dynamic ads actually makes this very easy because our ad title uses a dynamically generated headline, which is generally just going to be the headline right here, Montessori play gyms. And it's going to match pretty much what people are searching. So if you're actually targeting some of these uh, specific pages like this, and let's just say we use this one, this one as an example, so we can target this specific page. And then when somebody searches for this, our search ad will actually come up directly in Bing, Yahoo, any of the other Bing search partners. And from there, what we can do is send people directly to this product page. So we can take that as well and copy this link address, come back over to our uh, ad group here, say, let's cancel this. Let's add another URL, add all, and you can add a huge list of URLs here. And now we have both of these URLs. I wish it didn't cut off these URLs, but these are the two URLs, the uh, Montessori Play Gyms URL and the actual specific Play Gym here. So you can do that to target individual pages, individual products, or product category pages. And then what all you really need to do when you're creating your advertisement is set your ad text one, ad text two. So like your description lines. So they will also generate dynamic search ad text in addition to the text we provide. And then you can set your path here. The final URL is dynamic, a dynamically selected landing page. So essentially all you need to do to create your advertisements is write two 90 character description lines or less than 90 characters, two description lines here, click on save. And now you have a dynamic ad group.
Now, the other option when it comes to targeting, and we're going to remove all of our targets here, is to create a rule. So what you could do is say URL contains, and I can say something like Montessori, and I can say play and gyms. Okay, so what that would do is the URL contains Montessori, play, gyms. That means that our actual product category here contains Montessori play gyms, so that would target that specific play, this specific category page, and any of the URLs that have Montessori play gyms in it. So if we look up at the top here, Montessori play gyms, it would target all of those there. And then what we can look at is if we're coming over to some of these different pages. Now, some of these may not be perfect in terms of the targeting because not all of them contain the actual keywords Montessori play gyms in them because you can see the way I have this set up, brickpop.com slash product. And then what you would have to do is make sure, so this one has Montessori jungle gym. So what we could also do is just say, let's make sure this is really targeted or let's make sure we have enough volume here so we have anything that contains Montessori and gyms. So then if it's Montessori jungle gyms or play gyms, we add all of these and now we have URL contains those. And then what we could also do is say, and URL contains Montessori and, and maybe something like jungle and at all that would target any that have Montessori jungle gyms. And then if we really wanna make this, you know, increase our volume, we could just say URL contains gyms and assume that any of the URLs on our website that are have Montessori play gyms or jungle gyms or any of these like that, that we are targeting all of these different keywords. So now what we have is our target, which you basically just could use this target gyms, you don't need the other two. Uh, but what we could do is we can use that for our target. Now I've used an example recently with Google ads using TripAdvisor and the way TripAdvisor has their URL set up is if we are want to target a specific, if we want to target every single hotel in Nashville, you could basically say URL contains because the way they're not, they're, URLs are set up and I'll show you in a second, URL contains Nashville and URL contains hotel. So let's open TripAdvisor real quick. And if we use these as our target, like as our rules for our URLs, URL contains Nashville and URL contains hotel, and we open up any of the individual pages for Nashville hotel. So this is a specific hotel in Nashville, Drury Plaza. And you can see here the URL, the way it's set up at the very top, it starts with hotel underscore review. And then what you can see down here is Nashville, downtown Nashville. So basically every single hotel contains the word hotel in it and the word Nashville when it comes to Nashville hotel. So it makes it much easier to target than trying to target specific individual keywords like Drury Plaza Hotel Nashville Downtown. That is really a great reason to actually use dynamic search ads is if you're a trip advisor and you're trying to target for thousands or you know however many hotels they have, you can basically use this, these target specific web pages on my website. Now you have an ad group for Nashville. You can create an ad group for let's say Charleston, you can create an ad group for Miami, and you're able to target all of these different hotels within these different locations. And you can obviously set up different different campaigns because you wanna target different areas. So it really depends on how they have everything set up, but it does make it easier using dynamic search ads within your search campaign. And then all you need to do is add these targets. So you need to set the targets, add them. Now this would target every single hotel in Miami on the TripAdvisor website. And then all you need to do is create your advertisement, add your ad text, save and create your ad group. It's really that simple to create dynamic search ad groups. Now, one of, a few of the things that you need to do is if we come back over here, when you go into your campaign and you go to your campaign settings. So let's open up our campaign we had here. So we're in the ad group level. Let's come over to the campaign level. We'll select our sample campaign that we've been working on. And then when we click through here and we go to our settings, so a lot of different campaign settings here, but one of the campaign settings is going to be whether or not you want to enable dynamic search ads. So we scroll to the bottom here, enable auto generated assets for responsive search ads. And then what you would have to do is enable dynamic search ads. So you can enter your website here and you can have your targeting source as well. So you definitely need to have this in your campaign settings. If you do want to create dynamic search ad groups, and you can also enable these throughout the campaign creation process come all the way to the bottom, we click on save, and now we were able to actually use dynamic search ads within our Bing ads campaign. So you wanna make sure you have that setting checked. Now, a couple of different things to go over really quickly is if you go over here to tools and you go to business data, this is where you can actually create a page feed and use that for your targeting. So I was looking for the template on Microsoft Advertising's website, but they use the same exact template as Google ads. So the way the template works is you have two columns, so A and B, the A column says page URL, the B column says custom label. 
what you can do is you set specific page URLs here. So using the example of TripAdvisor, what they can do is say, okay, let's take, and we have hotels in Savannah here. Let's take uh, hotels in Savannah, which is their main, which I don't think this isn't the right URL. I just created this fake URL here. Um, but you can take this URL here and then you set custom labels. So Savannah, Savannah hotels and hotels. And then what they can do is put each individual hotel in Savannah. So we'll just use these example ones here. And then for each of those hotels, what you could do is the same exact thing here. So have those custom labels. And then what you do is you actually use, maybe for some of these, you get rid of just Savannah on its own. You just do Savannah hotels. And then what you can do is just target this label of Savannah hotels. So if you have a really organized page feed with labels for exactly what you're targeting, it's going to help you actually keep things a little bit more organized within your dynamic search ads campaigns. But I personally think it's much easier just to use the page URL rules because we could literally take hotel and we could take Nashville and do this for every single city on TripAdvisor. And it's really that simple to actually get that to work for us. So coming back over to our Microsoft advertising account, if you want to create a dynamic search ads campaign, pretty much similar to how we set up the, the ad group, all you're going to do is you're going to create a brand new campaign here. Your goal is going to be, generally you want to do conversions on your website. So this is what I would recommend using with search ads. Click on next. You want to make sure you have conversion tracking set up. Name your campaign. So let's put a name for our campaign here. Okay, so we have dynamic search ads example. Set your campaign budget. Set your location targeting. Who should see your ads? People in your targeted location. People searching or viewing pages about your targeted location. Generally, I keep it in. Depends on what you're targeting. Uh, keep scrolling down, set your language targeting. You can enable auto-generated assets for your responsive search ads. A lot of times I will enable this if it, I think it will improve the advertisements. And then you want to enable dynamic search ads. And this is where you want to enter your website. So we'll say brickpop.com. Use Bing, Bing's index of my website. Use URLs from my page feed only or use both. I'm going to just use Bing's index on my website because I didn't upload a page feed. If I were to upload a page feed for this website, basically what I would do is I would have a label for Montessori toys and you would have all of these different product category pages in there. And what I could do is target that label and it will basically target every single product category page here. You could also make it more granular and have, okay, Montessori balance boards, bath toys, blocks, busy boards, et cetera, et cetera. Make all of those individual labels. This is where to me, it just makes it easier to actually just use the page URLs because you can also use negative dynamic ad targets, which I'll go through in a minute. So within our new campaign, save and go to the next step. And now we're going to set up our ad groups and you can see we have dynamic ad groups or standard ad groups here. So we could choose one or the other or both. Um, but if we do dynamic ad groups, we can set our ad group name. We'll just use our same example from earlier, Montessori play gyms. And what we want to do is let's say target categories. We don't have any categories for this. You can target all web pages. That would basically just make sure that you have every single page in your targeting. In this case, we want to target specific web pages and we're going to take this URL and we're going to come over to Microsoft advertising. And what we want to do is enter that specific URL there, click on add all. And now we have our dynamic ad target here. That's going to target this specific product category page. So if we want to target all these individual products, what we would want to do is say rules. Let's just say we want to target Montessori play gyms, the product category page and every single product page we could say URL contains. And what would probably work is if we do gym because every single one of those URLs probably contains gym. So we opened up this one here. So this one has three pieces, Montessori jungle gym. Okay. So this has jungle gym here. Um, so whether it contains gym or gyms, either way it will target, but most of these here, I mean, a lot of them just pull directly from, so this one wouldn't actually be targeted, but that's perfectly fine. So what you could do is if you go through each of these individual products, you could always say, okay, let's say coming over here. So URL contains gym URL equals this one here. So you can enter a bunch of different targets. So we have our URL equals, this is our product category page. URL contains gym that would include every single Montessori play gym, jungle gym that we have here. And then we could also just take some of these here where if it doesn't have gym in the actual product name, then it's not going to actually have that in our targeting. So we could just come over here and use exact URLs and enter some of those exact URLs as well. There's no issue if you have the same target twice. So if, if this one 
This URL equals targets this product category page. This URL contains Jim would also target this product category page. That's perfectly fine. So you don't want to add a million different ad targets, but you want to try to find, okay, now we're targeting all of these different, di different pages on our website that are all relevant to this specific ad group. And now we have our dynamic ad target all set up. We can add a new ad group, but let's save and go to the next step. And now from there, what we would want to do is create our advertisement. So very simple. You write your two ad texts here. You want to make sure you're adding your ad extensions to your advertisements as well. So you can do action extensions here, price extensions, promotion extensions. There's site link extensions. Obviously, you want to add these. I have a bunch of different site link extensions because I've used other websites in this account as for examples. Um, call out structured snippets, filter link extensions, review, location, call, flyer, basically any relevant extension to your business. I always say use all it does is it makes your advertisement bigger, gives more information in your advertisement and basically gives you more relevancy overall from there, save and go to the next step and you can launch your campaign. And it's that simple to create dynamic search ads campaigns. What you want to do is create a bunch of different ad groups. And since it's so much easier to create your advertisements, because all you have to do is set two different description lines, what you could do is create easily create dynamic ad targets with different ad groups for all of these different categories on your website. So I would be able to set up this campaign pretty quickly through Microsoft advertising or through Google ads. You can also import your dynamic search ads directly from Google ads into Microsoft advertising. So always keep that in mind. And we'd be able to set up these targets really quickly and create a campaign really quickly. And then basically Microsoft advertising does the work for us in a lot of ways when it comes to targeting. They're going to use our individual pages, whether it's products, whether it is a product category page to target people that are searching for some of the different things that are on our website. So this is how dynamic search ads work. Now let's come back over here to our campaigns. Okay, let's leave this campaign. Okay, and what you can see here is on the left-hand side, if we click on dynamic ad targets, a couple different things. First and foremost, you can still add negative keywords for your dynamic ad targets. So if you already have a negative keyword list, a list of negative keywords that you apply to your campaigns, you know, things like free, affordable, template, jobs, hiring, things that are, you know, if somebody's going to search that keyword, you don't want to be targeting them. Even if somebody's saying, you know, Montessori schools that are hiring, you don't want that person to be going to your website because you're trying to sell toys. So you're trying to find people that are actively searching for toys. So you definitely still want to use negative keywords for your dynamic ad targeting. And then what you could also do under dynamic ad targets here is set negative dynamic ad targets. So pretty easy, add an exclusion, select your campaign. So we'll use our brick pop dynamic search ads. And what you could do is say, okay, there's certain URLs I just don't want to include in my targeting. Maybe they are, you know, for the most part, you're not going to have issues where like Google sending traffic to your privacy policy page or your contact us page, because they're looking for valuable pages on your website, such as product pages like this. Potentially, if you have uh, blog posts where there are affiliate products or ads in your blog posts and things like that, where you have valuable pages on your website. Now you could say, okay, I have some of these different informative pages on my website. I don't want them included in my targeting. So that's where you would use some of those negative ad targets. So those are dynamic search ads makes it a little bit easier to create your search campaigns. If you already have a really good website with a lot of information that's keyword focused, you don't need to create a brand new search campaign. That's all targeting keywords because you can use these dynamic ad targets incorporate negative keywords, incorporate negative dynamic ad targets, and then allow Microsoft advertising or Google ads to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So these are Microsoft advertising dynamic search ads campaigns. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. Again, you can combine standard ad groups with dynamic ad groups. I have found for the most part that standard ad groups take precedence over dynamic ad groups. So for targeting specific keywords, and then we're also targeting dynamic ad targets. Generally, the keywords are going to be what Google uses um, in just based on what I've seen in the past, but maybe not always the case. And maybe it depends on how things are performing. So if you do have an existing search campaign that you're trying to expand, uh, so we have this sample campaign here, this is where you can try to use dynamic search ads and see if you can expand that campaign a little bit and in, give some more targeting in terms of the different things you offer on your website and hopefully just give more options to drive conversions back to your website when you are trying to use some of these automated bidding strategies and really trying to maximize your overall return on ad spend. So, all right, thank you for watching my video. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.